He's flying over basically the middle of nowhere when he sees a startling and unusual formation amongst the rocks below, which of course, he photographs. In a discovery that has reignited one of history's greatest mysteries, new evidence suggests that the legendary Noah's Ark may have finally been found. Hidden high in the rugged Turkish highlands, a mysterious ship-like formation has captured the attention of archaeologists and scientists worldwide. Could this be the remains of the Ark that, according to the Bible, survived the Great Flood? The Discovery in Turkey In 1959, a routine aerial reconnaissance mission led by Captain Ilhan Durupinar of the Turkish Army would unexpectedly spark a firestorm of excitement and controversy. As part of a NATO mapping project, Durupinar was tasked with photographing the remote and rugged terrain of the Turkish highlands, a region steeped in biblical lore and located just miles from the legendary Mount Ararat, the supposed resting place of Noah's Ark, according to Genesis. As Durupinar flew over the desolate landscape, his keen eye spotted something peculiar among the rocky crags below. The unusual formation, nestled in the mountains of eastern Turkey, bore an uncanny resemblance to a massive ship. Intrigued, Durupinar captured several photographs of the anomaly before returning to base, unaware that he may have just stumbled upon one of the greatest archaeological mysteries of our time. When the aerial photographs were developed and analyzed, experts were stunned by what they saw. There, etched into the barren Turkish landscape, was an unmistakable outline of a ship-like structure measuring an astonishing 515 feet in length, a dimension remarkably close to the biblical description of Noah's Ark, which was said to be 300 cubits long, or roughly 450 feet. News of the discovery spread like wildfire, igniting a passionate debate among scholars, religious leaders, and skeptics alike. For those who had long believed in the literal truth of the biblical flood narrative, the Darupinar site represented a tantalizing piece of evidence, a potential confirmation of the Ark's existence that seemed to validate their unwavering conviction. Believers from around the world hailed the find as a milestone in biblical archaeology, their excitement palpable as they anticipated unraveling the secrets hidden within the mysterious formation. This discovery stood as a powerful symbol of faith's enduring influence, bridging ancient scripture and modern exploration. However, not everyone was convinced. Many scientists and archaeologists approached the discovery with a healthy dose of skepticism, arguing that the peculiar shape could easily be explained as a natural geological formation carved by the forces of erosion and weathering over countless millennia. The Biblical Flood Narrative At the heart of the fascination surrounding Noah's Ark lies the biblical account of the Great Flood a cataclysmic event that has captivated the imaginations of generations. According to the book of Genesis, God looked upon the wickedness of humanity and determined that the earth had become corrupted beyond redemption. In his divine wisdom, he resolved to cleanse the world of its impurities and start anew. Amid this impending doom, one man found favor in the eyes of the Almighty, Noah, a righteous and blameless individual in his generation. God commanded Noah to build an ark, a massive vessel designed to preserve life in the face of the coming deluge. The dimensions of the ark were meticulously specified, 300 cubits in length, 50 cubits in width, and 30 cubits in height, equating to approximately 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet tall. For 120 years, Noah labored tirelessly to construct the ark, following the divine blueprint and using gopher wood, a now extinct species of timber, to craft the enormous ship. As the appointed time drew near, God instructed Noah to gather his family and a representative pair of every animal species on Earth, ensuring their survival and the continuation of life in the post-flood world. When the fateful day arrived, the heavens opened and a torrential rain descended upon the Earth the likes of which had never been seen before or since. For 40 days and 40 nights, the floodwaters surged, consuming every inch of land and destroying all living things that drew breath. The Ark, borne aloft by the rising waters, became a solitary beacon of hope amid the chaos and devastation. 
As the rain subsided and the floodwaters began to recede, the Ark came to rest upon the mountains of Ararat, a sacred site that has long been associated with the biblical narrative. After more than a year adrift on the endless expanse of water, Noah and his family emerged from the Ark, stepping out into a world reborn. The story of Noah's Ark and the Great Flood holds immense theological significance, standing as a powerful symbol of God's judgment against sin and his unwavering commitment to the preservation of righteous life. It serves as a reminder of the consequences of moral decay and the importance of obedience and trust in the face of adversity. However, the nature and extent of the biblical flood have been the subject of much debate among scholars and believers alike. Some interpret the account as a literal description of a global cataclysm, while others view it as a metaphorical or localized event, possibly inspired by ancient flood myths from the Near East. Geological Evidence for a Historical Flood As the debate surrounding the historical accuracy of the biblical flood narrative rages on, a remarkable discovery in the late 20th century added a new dimension to the discussion. In 1997, a team of geologists led by William Ryan and Walter Pittman of Columbia University uncovered compelling evidence of a massive flood in the Black Sea region, an event that could potentially correspond with the timing and location of the biblical deluge. Known as the Black Sea Deluge Theory, Ryan and Pittman's research suggests that around 5600 BC, the Black Sea was a freshwater lake, isolated from the Mediterranean Sea by the Bosporus Strait. As global temperatures rose following the last ice age, melting glaciers caused sea levels to rise dramatically. When the Mediterranean finally breached the Bosporus, a catastrophic flood ensued, with water pouring into the Black Sea Basin at an astonishing rate of 200 times the volume of Niagara Falls. The impact of this deluge would have been nothing short of apocalyptic for the Neolithic farming communities that thrived along the shores of the ancient lake. As the floodwaters surged, entire settlements were submerged, forcing people to flee for their lives and seek refuge on higher ground. The trauma of this event, Ryan and Pittman argue, could have been passed down through generations, evolving into the flood myths that permeate so many ancient cultures, including the biblical story of Noah. Supporting the Black Sea Deluge theory is a wealth of sedimentary and fossil evidence recovered from the depths of the Black Sea. Core samples taken from the sea floor reveal a distinct transition from freshwater to saltwater sediments, indicating a rapid and dramatic change in the basin's environment. The presence of ancient river valleys and shorelines, now submerged beneath hundreds of feet of water, further attest to the scale and impact of the flood. Perhaps most intriguing is the discovery of freshwater fossils, including shells and plant remains, buried deep within the saltwater sediments of the Black Sea. These fossils, some dating back more than 7,000 years, provide a tantalizing glimpse into the ecosystems that once thrived in the region before the deluge transformed the landscape forever. While the Black Sea deluge theory does not conclusively prove the existence of Noah's Ark or the biblical flood, it offers a compelling case for the occurrence of a major flood event in the ancient Near East, one that could have left an indelible mark on the collective memory of the region's inhabitants. As scientists continue to explore the depths of the Black Sea and unravel the secrets of its past, we may yet gain a clearer understanding of the complex interplay between history, myth, and the enduring power of human storytelling. The implications of the Black Sea Deluge extend far beyond the realm of biblical archaeology. If such a flood did occur, it would have had a profound impact on the development of early human civilizations in the region. The sudden inundation of vast areas of land would have displaced entire populations, forcing them to migrate to new territories and adapt to unfamiliar environments. This upheaval could have facilitated the spread of ideas, technologies, and cultural practices across the ancient world, shaping the course of human history in ways we are only beginning to understand. Moreover, the parallels between the Black Sea Deluge and flood myths from other ancient cultures raise intriguing questions about the universality of such stories and the shared experiences that may have inspired them. Ancient Texts and Flood Myths The quest to unravel the mysteries surrounding Noah's Ark and the Great Flood 
has led researchers and scholars to delve into the rich tapestry of ancient texts and flood myths that have captivated human imagination for millennia. Among these ancient narratives, the Epic of Gilgamesh stands as a striking parallel to the biblical flood story, offering tantalizing clues about the shared memory of a cataclysmic event that may have shaped the course of human history. The Epic of Gilgamesh, an ancient Mesopotamian text that predates the Bible by centuries, tells the tale of a great hero king who embarks on a quest for immortality. Central to this epic is the story of Utnapishtim, a righteous man who is warned by the gods of an impending flood that will destroy all life on earth. Instructed to build a massive ark and fill it with his family, animals, and the seeds of all living things, Utnapishtim survived the deluge and was granted eternal life by the gods. The similarities between the flood narrative in the Epic of Gilgamesh and the biblical story of Noah's Ark are nothing short of remarkable. Both tales involve a divinely ordained flood, a righteous hero tasked with building an ark, and the preservation of life through the catastrophe. The parallels are so striking that many scholars believe the two stories may have a common origin, perhaps rooted in a historical event that left an indelible mark on the collective memory of ancient Mesopotamia. Adding to the intrigue is the discovery of a 4,000-year-old clay tablet in the British Museum, which contains yet another flood narrative that bears an uncanny resemblance to the story of Noah's Ark. The tablet, deciphered by Dr. Irving Finkel, a renowned expert in ancient Mesopotamian languages, describes a circular ark with detailed instructions for its construction and a story of divine warning and the survival of a righteous man and his family. The significance of Dr. Finkel's translation cannot be overstated. The clay tablet not only provides further evidence of the widespread nature of flood myths in the ancient Near East, but also suggests that the story of a great deluge and a life-saving ark may have been part of a shared cultural heritage that extended far beyond the biblical narrative. As researchers continue to explore the world of ancient texts, they have uncovered a wealth of flood myths from cultures across the globe each with its own unique twist on the tale of a catastrophic deluge and the survival of a chosen few. From the Hindu legend of Manu and the fish avatar of Vishnu, to the Greek myth of Deucalion and Pyrrha, and even to the flood stories of Native American tribes, the prevalence of these narratives hints at the possibility of a shared memory of a significant flood event in human prehistory. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. The Noah's Ark story and the biblical flood were long thought to be unconnected to science, but then revelations were made due to discoveries of ancient sea animals on mountains, suggesting that massive floods covered the earth in the past. And now, scientists finally found evidence for Noah's Ark. Advanced radar imaging has revealed a startling discovery beneath Mount Tenderek in eastern Turkey a massive ship-shaped anomaly buried deep. Its dimensions, over 500 feet long and 100 feet wide, align remarkably with the biblical description of Noah's Ark. Scientists are now eager to conduct advanced studies for definitive proof. However, the challenging terrain of the mountain and various restrictions are causing problems. What are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comments. The Drupinar Site Investigation Nestled in the rugged mountains of eastern Turkey, the Darupinar site has long been a focal point for those seeking tangible evidence of Noah's Ark. This peculiar geological formation, which bears an uncanny resemblance to a massive ship, has captivated the imaginations of researchers, adventurers, and believers alike, sparking a series of investigations that have sought to unravel the secrets of this enigmatic location. The early expeditions to the Darupinar site, led by intrepid researchers such as Dr. Arthur Brandenberger and Dr. Ron Wyatt, were driven by a passionate belief in the literal truth of the biblical flood narrative. Armed with little more than their faith, determination, and a handful of basic survey tools, these pioneers of ARC research conducted initial surveys and excavations at the site, hoping to uncover conclusive evidence that the peculiar formation was indeed the remains of Noah's legendary vessel. As interest in the Darupinar site grew, more sophisticated scientific investigations began to take shape. 
geological surveys, employing advanced techniques such as ground-penetrating radar GPR, were conducted to probe beneath the surface of the formation, revealing tantalizing hints of a structure that seemed to match the dimensions and shape of an ancient ship. These findings, while not conclusive, added fuel to the fire of speculation and debate surrounding the site's true nature. One of the most controversial claims about the Darupinar site came from Ron Wyatt, who introduced the concept of drogue stones as evidence of the Ark's presence. Drogue stones, in maritime contexts, are devices used to slow or stabilize a vessel. Wyatt claimed to have found large, anchor-like stones with holes drilled through them scattered around the Darupinar site. He argued that these were used to stabilize Noah's Ark during the flood, suggesting that their presence was proof of the site's authenticity. However, not all researchers were convinced by the evidence presented at Durupanar, including Wyatt's drogue stone theory. Skeptical geologists and archaeologists have long maintained that the formation is nothing more than a natural phenomenon, the result of complex geological processes that have shaped the landscape over millions of years. They point to the presence of similar formations in the region, such as synclines and mudflows, as evidence that the Durupanar site is simply a quirk of nature, rather than the remains of a wooden ship. Extensive geological analysis has since refuted Wyatt's drogue stone claims. Scientists demonstrated that the boat-like shape visible in aerial surveys can be fully explained by naturally occurring lava flows. Moreover, detailed examinations of the alleged drogue stones revealed no evidence of human quarrying or transportation, severely undermining Wyatt's hypothesis. The search for Noah's Ark has been marred by controversy and unethical practices. In 2010, the Noah's Ark Ministry's International NAMI Coalition claimed to have uncovered legitimate Ark remnants during unauthorized climbs on Mount Ararat in 2008. However, subsequent investigations revealed that the materials presented as ancient Ark remnants were modern fabrications, deliberately crafted to deceive believers. This incident highlighted the need for rigorous scientific scrutiny and ethical conduct in ARC research, underscoring the challenges faced by researchers in separating fact from fiction in this contentious field. Scientific Analysis and Debates As the investigation into the Darupinar site and other potential locations of Noah's Ark continues, researchers have turned to the tools of modern science to unravel the mysteries of these ancient sites. The Ark Quest has become a multidisciplinary endeavor that has pushed the boundaries of archaeological and geological research. One of the most intriguing lines of evidence in the broader Noah's Ark debate is the presence of marine fossils in high-altitude locations worldwide, including the mountains near the Darupinar site. Proponents of the Ark theory view these fossils as compelling evidence for a global flood event. They argue that the presence of marine life remains at such high elevations can only be explained by a catastrophic flood that covered even the highest mountains, depositing sea creatures far above current sea levels. Arc theorists suggest that as floodwaters receded, marine organisms were left stranded in sedimentary layers that later hardened into rock. They contend that the sheer volume of fossils found in some locations, along with their preservation state, indicates rapid burial consistent with a massive flood event. This interpretation aligns with their belief in a young earth and a literal reading of the biblical flood narrative. However, the scientific consensus offers a different explanation for these high-altitude marine fossils. According to mainstream geology, these fossils were originally deposited in ancient shallow seas hundreds of millions of years ago. Over vast periods, tectonic forces caused the uplift of these former seabeds, resulting in their current high-altitude positions. This process, known as orogeny, is responsible for the formation of many of the world's major mountain ranges. This scientific explanation is supported by evidence from various mountain ranges worldwide. For instance, the presence of marine fossils in the Himalayas is attributed to the collision of the Indian and Eurasian tectonic plates which began approximately 50 million years ago. This collision caused the uplift of ancient seabeds, carrying marine fossils to elevations exceeding 8,000 meters above sea level. Similar processes have occurred in other mountain ranges globally, including the Alps, Andes, and the mountains of eastern Turkey. 
the scientific study of these fossils contributes significantly to our understanding of Earth's ancient environments, climate changes, and the evolution of life over hundreds of millions of years. Paleontologists and geologists use these fossils to reconstruct ancient ecosystems, track the movement of continents, and chart the course of evolution through time. The Implications of Finding the Ark the discovery of Noah's Ark, if conclusively proven, would have profound implications for religious communities, the scientific world, and the broader dialogue between faith and reason. For those who view the Bible as a historical document, the confirmation of the Ark's existence would be nothing short of a paradigm-shifting event, one that could fundamentally alter the way we understand the relationship between Scripture and the material world. In the realm of religious belief, the impact of such a discovery would be immense. For many believers, particularly those who adhere to a literal interpretation of the Bible, the Ark's discovery would serve as a powerful validation of their faith, providing tangible evidence of the historical accuracy of the biblical narrative. This could lead to a resurgence of interest in the Bible as a source of historical truth, as well as a renewed commitment to the principles and values embodied in its stories. However, the implications of the Ark's discovery would extend far beyond the realm of faith alone. For the scientific community, particularly in the fields of archaeology, geology, and anthropology, the confirmation of the Ark's existence would represent a monumental challenge to our understanding of the ancient world and the forces that have shaped it. If the Ark were proven to be real, it would require a fundamental reevaluation of our assumptions about the history of human civilization, the nature of catastrophic events, and the role of myth and legend in preserving the memories of our ancestors. At the same time, the discovery of the Ark could also serve as a bridge between different religious traditions, fostering a new era of interfaith dialogue and understanding. The story of Noah's Ark is one that is shared by Judaism, Christianity, and Islam and its confirmation as a historical reality could provide a common ground for these faiths to explore their shared heritage and values. In a world that is all too often divided by religious conflict and misunderstanding, the Ark could serve as a powerful symbol of our common humanity and the enduring power of faith in the face of adversity. The implications of finding Noah's Ark would be as profound as they are far-reaching. It would challenge us to reconsider our assumptions about the nature of history, the role of religion in human society, and the complex interplay between science and faith. The Global Flood Debate At the heart of the quest for Noah's Ark lies a fundamental question that has long divided scholars, scientists, and believers alike. Was the flood described in 2740 BC, the Book of Genesis, a local event confined to a specific region of the ancient Near East, or was it a global catastrophe that reshaped the face of the Earth itself? For advocates of local flood theory, the evidence is compelling. They point to the fact that many ancient cultures, particularly those in the Mesopotamian region, have flood stories that bear striking similarities to the biblical narrative. These stories, they argue, may be based on a real but localized flood event that occurred in the distant past perhaps as a result of a catastrophic shift in the course of the Tigris or Euphrates rivers. Moreover, the local flood theorists argue that the geological evidence for a global flood is simply not there. While there are certainly signs of ancient catastrophic events in the Earth's history, such as the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis or the end Pleistocene extinctions, these events do not align neatly with the timeline or the scale of the biblical flood narrative. On the other hand, those who support the global flood theory maintain that the Bible's account should be taken at face value and that the evidence for a worldwide deluge is hidden in plain sight. They point to the presence of marine fossils in high mountain ranges, the existence of massive erosional features like the Grand Canyon, and the widespread distribution of flood stories in cultures around the world as evidence that a catastrophic global flood did indeed occur in the ancient past. For these believers, the story of Noah's Ark is not simply a metaphor or a localized legend, but a true historical account of a world-altering event that shaped the course of human history and left an indelible mark on the collective memory of our species. Regardless of where one stands on the question of the Flood's scope, there is no denying the enduring power of the Noah's Ark story 
as a cultural and religious touchstone. Like many great myths and oral traditions, it may well preserve the memory of a real event, filtered through the lens of human imagination and the passage of countless generations. In this sense, the debate over the global versus local flood theories is more than just an academic exercise or a matter of religious doctrine. It is a reflection of the ongoing struggle to make sense of our place in the world, to understand the forces that have shaped our history and our beliefs, and to find meaning and purpose in the face of the unknown. Ongoing and Future Investigations As the debate over the historical reality of Noah's Ark and the Biblical Flood continues to rage, intrepid researchers and explorers remain undaunted in their quest to uncover the truth behind this enduring mystery. From the windswept heights of Mount Ararat to the rugged terrain of the Durupinar site, the search for tangible evidence of the Ark's existence has become a global endeavor, one that continues to push the boundaries of archaeological and scientific investigation. In recent years, a number of high-profile expeditions have sought to shed new light on the Ark's fate, using cutting-edge technology and interdisciplinary expertise to explore the most promising sites and uncover new clues about the ancient past. Organizations like NOAA's Ark Ministries International have mounted ambitious campaigns to scour the slopes of Ararat and the surrounding region, employing advanced radar imaging, satellite photography, and ground-penetrating sensors to detect any signs of the Ark's remains. While these expeditions have yet to yield conclusive proof of the Ark's existence, they have succeeded in generating renewed interest and excitement about the possibilities of archaeological discovery in the region. As new technologies and techniques continue to emerge, the prospects for future breakthroughs in the search for the Ark have never been brighter. However, the challenges facing researchers and explorers in this field remain daunting. The political instability and cultural sensitivities of the region, combined with the logistical difficulties of mounting large-scale expeditions in remote and rugged terrain, have made the search for the Ark a fraught and often frustrating endeavor. Moreover, the potential for hoaxes, misidentifications, and false leads remains a constant threat, as the allure of the Ark story continues to attract charlatans and opportunists, alongside serious scholars and investigators. As with any great historical mystery, the search for Noah's Ark has been marked by its fair share of dead ends, false starts, and outright deceptions. Despite these challenges, however, the quest for the Ark continues to captivate the human imagination, embodying our enduring fascination with the unknown. It exemplifies the unquenchable thirst for knowledge and understanding that propels us to explore the frontiers of our world and delve into the depths of our past. As we look to the future of ARC research, it is clear that the road ahead will be long and arduous, filled with obstacles and uncertainties at every turn. But it is also a road that holds the promise of incredible rewards, both in terms of scientific discovery and in deepening our understanding of the human story and the forces that have shaped it. With each passing year, new technologies and techniques are emerging that hold the potential to revolutionize the search for the ARC and other great archaeological mysteries. From advanced satellite imaging and remote sensing to cutting-edge methods of materials analysis and dating, the tools at our disposal are becoming ever more sophisticated and powerful, allowing us to peer deeper into the past than ever before. But ultimately, the success of the ongoing and future investigations into the mystery of Noah's Ark will depend not just on the tools and techniques we employ, but on the spirit of curiosity, determination, and wonder that drives us to pursue this great quest in the first place. For as long as there are those who dream of uncovering the secrets of the ancient world and the enduring power of human belief, the search for Noah's Ark will continue to inspire and captivate us, drawing us ever closer to the truth behind one of the greatest stories ever told. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.